Why, hello, little ones. It's a pleasure to see you again. Have you been well since the last time we were here together in the safe space? We do hope so. We care for each and every one of you ever so much. That's why we created this safe space, so that no matter what kind of a day you're having, or where you are, you'll always have a space to come to, to feel safe and listen to our stories together. Now then, the last time we read the saggy, baggy elephant, didn't we? And a few days ago, we asked your older brothers and sisters over Instagram to have you vote for which story was next. Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, or the pokey little puppy. And overwhelmingly, you all said that you wanted to hear the pokey little puppy. So that is the story that we'll be reading today. But whatever did I do with it? It's not over here, near the castle. And it's not over here, by Bitsy and Betsy. Wherever could it be? I know. Let's have a look in the chest, shall we? Excuse me, Mr. Bear. We'll have to move you temporarily. Isn't he a perfectly lovely bear? He's so terribly pink, and he has a very important heart with a very important word on it. Do you know what that word is? Very good. It's love. L-O-V-E. Love. And that is a terribly important word, because you are loved. All right, Mr. Bear, we'll set you down right there while we take a look in the chest. <gasps> What's this? More books. And sure enough, here's the book we're looking for. Very good. You hold that, Mr. Bear. And we'll close up the chest. So he'll have a place to sit and listen to. Thank you very much, Mr. Bear. Back up you go. Now then, is everyone ready? Do you have your favorite toy, or your blankie, or your stuffy? If not, press pause and go and get them. We'll be right here waiting for you. Have you got them now? Excellent. All right, everyone, snuggle up close. Put your best listening ears on as we listen to the pokey little puppy. The Pokey Little Puppy by Jeanette Sebring Lowry Illustrated by Gustav Tengren Five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, one after the other. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now where in the world is that pokey little puppy? they wondered, for he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a fuzzy caterpillar. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a quick green lizard. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, running round and round, his nose to the ground. What is he doing? the four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see, roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-bumble, till they came to the green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? they asked. I smell something, said the pokey little puppy. Then the four little puppies began to sniff, and they smelled it too. Rice pudding, they said. And home they went, as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. 
And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them, with rice pudding for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you're the little puppies who dig holes under fences, she said. No rice pudding tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone was sound asleep. He ate up the rice pudding and crawled into bed, happy as a lark. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign. The sign said, Don't ever dig holes under this fence. But the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence just the same and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered. For he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a big black spider. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a brown hop toad. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there was the pokey little puppy sitting still as a stone, with his head on one side and his ears cocked up. What's he doing? the four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see, roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-bumble, till they came to the green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? they asked. I hear something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies listened, and they could hear it too. <gasps> Chocolate custard, they cried. Someone is spooning it into our bowls. And home they went as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them, with chocolate custard for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you're the little puppies who will dig holes under fences, she said. No chocolate custard tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone else was sound asleep, and he ate up all the chocolate custard and crawled into bed happy as a lark. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign. The sign said, Don't ever, ever dig holes under this fence. But... In spite of that, the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. <gasps> One little puppy wasn't there. Now where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered, for he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a little grass snake. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a big grasshopper. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, looking hard at something on the ground in front of him. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see, roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-bumble, till they came to the green grass. And there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? they asked. I see something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies looked, and they could see it, too. It was a ripe red strawberry. 
growing there in the grass. Strawberry shortcake, they cried. And home they went, as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with strawberry shortcake for dessert. But their mother said, So you're the little puppies who dug that hole under the fence again. No strawberry shortcake for supper tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the four little puppies waited till they thought that she was asleep, and then they slipped out and filled up the hole. And when they turned round, there was their mother watching them. What good little puppy, she said. Come and have some strawberry shortcake. And this time, when the pokey little puppy got home, he had to squeeze in through a wide place in the fence. And there were his four brothers and sisters licking the last crumbs from their saucer. Dear me, said his mother, what a pity you're so pokey. Now the strawberry shortcake is all gone. So the pokey little puppy had to go to bed without a single bite of shortcake, and he felt very sorry for himself. And the next morning, someone had put up a sign that read, No desserts ever unless puppies never dig holes under this fence again. And look, there's the sign, and there's the pokey little puppy looking at it. Do you think he'll listen this time? I would. I want some strawberry shortcake. The end. Wasn't that a lovely story? You know, it's very interesting, but our friend the little puppy here had to learn the hard way that you must sometimes listen to the rules. It caused him to be a bit greedy, didn't it, whenever he and his four other brothers and sisters went out into the wide, wide world. They didn't listen to what their mother said, and as a result, they lost their dessert. But because he was trying to be sly, the pokey little puppy got to eat up all that dessert. That wasn't very nice, was it? But, just as things always come around, the pokey little puppy learned in the long run that you can't always get away with things. It's better to share, and it's better to listen to the rules. Because sometimes, children aren't always aware of everything that's going on. Sometimes your older brothers and sisters might have to tell you things that you may not like and make you follow the rules, but they don't do this to be mean. They do it for your own safety, because it's a very big world out there, and littles are terribly, terribly precious. So the next time that one of your bigger brothers and sisters asks you to do something, even if you might not understand why you can't stay up late, or have two bowls of ice cream. It might be best to listen to them, or you might end up with a terrible tummy ache. Well, little ones, that's it for this time. We'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching us and coming to listen to our stories here in the safe space. And now we have three very important things to remember, don't we? Now then, always remember that you are loved, that you are strong, and that you are not alone. I'm Percival. Goodbye now.